The saying goes, may you live in interesting times. Well, we're certainly seeing them, especially in the workforce. It seems the change, and constant change at that, is now normal and not just periodic. We're seeing more and more of us living by cobbling together a number of part-time jobs, more older workers deciding to stay on the job after retirement age, shorter hours, and a shortening of the work week. All of these trends fit into human resources, both within company operations and how organizations reach out to the workforce and to society as a whole. When we speak of the labor force, we're speaking in a broad term to describe everybody working at jobs or those trying to find jobs who make up the larger available labor pool. An organization will, of course, have its own internal labor market, those already employed within the group, and then there's the external labor market, those looking for employment. Now, for the most part, the internal labor market comes from the external market, unless maybe if an employer convinces someone who's already retired or otherwise voluntarily not working to join the organization. The challenge for human resources is to be aware of the external market in order to be aware of changing trends and the talent and skills available. We're seeing a great deal of change in the external labor market these days. For one, there's an aging labor supply. Over 55 is the fastest growing age group in the workforce, and a good many individuals, for a variety of personal reasons, have discovered that they'll need to continue working well beyond the normal retirement age. Now, some didn't manage to save enough money, others lost their savings in the recession, and still others just like to work, or maybe it's a combination of all of those. And there's also a corporate need to keep older workers on the job because there just may not be enough younger workers coming into the market to meet those needs. We're also seeing more diverse workforces, racially, ethnically, and in gender. A significant amount of the change is due to immigration. Roughly half of the future workforce will be female. Within a decade or so, it's estimated that about 79% of the whole workforce will be white, with African Americans accounting for about 12%. Asians will make up about 6%, with other groups making up the rest. Human resources must also lead the way in an organization to make sure that the workplace is bias-free in promoting career development. The changing labor force also means differences in competition for attracting talent. There's the issue of meeting the needs of older workers, and jobs may have to be redesigned to help meet competing needs of other workers, perhaps differing hours or conditions, sharing positions, and who knows how much other creativity there might be. And of course, with that, there'll come the understanding of cultural differences. Human resources will also be called upon to take an active role in recognizing, attracting, and developing needed skills. There'll be a need for decision-making skills. Customer service, of course, will always rank high. Increased and improved teamwork will have to be uh, in employees' minds, and it'll be up to human resources to recognize that value. Then there's technical know-how and the need to stay current, even leading edge in computer work and other aspects of actually performing the job. It may also be that a pool of technically savvy incoming workers may not be readily available and that it will be more important than ever to retrain the force to meet those changing needs. From here we progress to the idea of the high performance work system. The human resources department of an organization and just a general management appreciation for human resources in general will be of foremost importance in turning an organization into a high performance work system. Now, this involves finding and recruiting employees with broad skills and strong motivation. And in this, we are seeing an increased reliance of knowledge workers, empowerment of employees, and teamwork. Knowledge workers, as the term implies, means workers who are skilled workers with specialized and, yes, knowledgeable skills. It's not just enough, though, to find someone who knows the skills of a job, but to also understand how to use that knowledge in serving customers. Knowledge is also one of the most difficult things for an organization to control because the knowledge worker owns what he or she knows, and that knowledge will travel with the worker to the next job. Employee empowerment is another new key concept. Employees need to have the power and authority to make decisions affecting the development of new products and even customer service. Jobs have to be designed in a way to enable employees to make wide-ranging decisions. 
This increases the employee motivation by linking workers to their share of results, both the wins and the losses. And along the way, employees need frequent feedback to let them know how they're doing and help evaluate their success. This needs to be coupled with pay and rewards tied to their level of success. The most effective results are also achieved when employees are engaged in what they're doing. Often that level of appreciation to inspire workers is just as important as the pay itself. And for the group to succeed, it often comes down to teamwork. And carrying this a step further, assigned teams can often work wonders in problem solving, development, better customer service, and lower employee turnover. Human resources, the department, and management support for the skills also help provide leadership in managing strategic planning. High quality standards play a role here and the concept of total quality management. The way people, equipment, and the systems all work together for success. This involves meeting internal and external customer needs, high quality training, building quality into the product at every step of the way rather than trying to correct a problem at the end of the process to promote cooperation with suppliers and customers, all done with managers monitoring and measuring progress every step of the way. Of course, meeting human resource needs and issues all along the way ties it all together. And there are issues of conflict resolution and providing or seeking out training in that area. In a tough economy, managing downsizing can be a major issue. Perhaps there can be voluntary programs that encourage some employees to retire early or take early settlements. Then there's the process of identifying the most and least valuable employees, and through it all, downsizing can be painful, not just for those being laid off, but also for those who stay. There's the emotional loss felt when friends and co-workers leave, and perhaps increased frustration in knowing that the jobs done by those whose work will now have to be added on to the responsibilities of those who are left behind. There can be re-engineering of jobs, updating or changing of equipment, and the learning curve that goes with it all. Here, human resources is again key in providing employee communication and leading the way in developing and conducting employee training. Through vast improvements in our ability to travel and transmit information, it can be truly said that we now live in a global economy. The world is the market and numerous businesses are expanding their operations around the globe to take advantage of economic opportunities. In doing so, it's often the lead responsibility of human resources to provide the company and the employees with the knowledge of cultural differences, employee training to work in other countries, to prepare employees for overseas assignments, and to even manage offshore operations. Human resources also plays the lead in easing a company and its workers through periods of adding new technology, perhaps through the internet, websites, or other online services. And there's also a collaboration among employees to make it all work. Now this can involve work structure, times and places, overseeing effective communications, and the importance of detecting and correcting problems. If this section has been about any one thing, that one thing has changed. And with the rapid change we've been seeing in just a relatively few years, there's a greater need than ever for flexibility. We can always argue that employees, of course, need to be flexible to adapt to possibly changing job conditions. For employers, that need for flexibility can translate to a company having to engage in outsourcing and using temporary and contract workers. There can be flexible schedules, including shorter work weeks. And finally, it can be necessary to move employees to different jobs altogether. Now here we've been taking an in-depth look at trends in human resource management. Next, we'll take up equal employment opportunities and a safe workplace.